Weapons of Mass Destruction, Mobile Solar Systems, Marvels of Mega Engineering and more. Today we are finally gonna talk about Giga Structure Engineering and more, an iconic mod originally made by Elowini, now maintained and updated by TTFT Cuts and bred with contributions from numerous others. In this video you will learn everything about Giga Structures, what are they, how to obtain them and most importantly how do they function. We're gonna start off the video with kill structures. They are small planetary structures, which don't require any ascension perks, and you will mostly need vanilla technologies to unlock them. They are relatively cheap, and they provide small bonuses to kickstart your journey with Giga Structure Engineering. First, we have Science Kilo Structures, the Macro Engineering Testing Station, the Stellar Particle Accelerator, and the Orbital Artificial Ecosystem. They all require cruisers to be unlocked, however, each one has a secondary tech requirement. Each of them is 10k alloys, 1000 unity, and 3600 days to be assembled, and they all produce 150 research from a chosen area. Each mega structure has different effects. The testing station increases your armor hit points, the particle accelerator increases your shield hit points, while the orbital artificial ecosystem speeds up terraforming. The stellar particle accelerator also has some additional features. It can be calibrated to produce either physics research, dark matter, or negative mass. You can also increase or decrease the intensity, with the higher intensities being more expensive and producing more resources, at the cost of a higher failure risk. If the accelerator fails, an event will allow you to fix it, or ignore it and possibly damage the kilo structure. Next we have terraforming kilo structures. The dynamic core igniter can be built around a barren or frozen planet. Upon completion you may begin terraforming, and as a result the planet will turn into a lifeless habitable world, which can be transformed into a regular habitable planet. To unlock the igniter you will need battleships, climate restoration, and the stellar particle accelerator research. It needs 6000 alloys, 1500 unity, 50 influence, and it requires 50 energy and 20 alloys for upkeep. With the dynamic core igniter unlocked, you may research the atmospheric purifier meant to terraform toxic wells. Its mechanics are basically the same, and after terraforming it creates a lifeless fogged world. The atmospheric purifier unlocks two kilo structures. The first one is the macroatmospheric stabilizer, capable of terraforming gas giants. It needs 11k alloys, 1500 unity, 50 influence and 9000 days to be built. Then you may start terraforming, and the gas giant will become habitable allowing you to colonize it. Habitable gas giants have unique districts for housing, industry, energy production, research and exotic gases. If you ever wanted to recreate Beespin from Star Wars, there is an origin called Gas Giant Liftoff, which makes a habitable gas giant your starting planet. The second kilo structure is the Geothermal Stabilizer, designed to terraform molten worlds, which later unlocks the glue, capable of putting shattered or broken worlds back together. This process however is more complicated, and you will need 8000 alloys and 2000 unity to complete the mega structure. After that you may start terraforming, but as a result you will get a molten world, so you still need a geothermal stabilizer to make it habitable. Then we have habitable kilo structures. Orbital elysiums are tiny rings built around colonies as a way to exert power or as resorts for the elites. They are really cheap and you will only need 1500 alloys, 300 influence and 1800 days to assemble them. They need galactic administration and star holes to be unlocked. Upon completion your colony will get the Orbital Elysium Host Planet modifier and the capital will be replaced by the Elysium Planetary Control Center. A new building will also appear, which adds jobs based on the planet's population and later the supplemental industrial sector will give you bonuses depending on the planet's designation. Orbital Elysiums gain building slots from the planet's housing districts, while the host planet gains them from its new capital building. Elysiums also have two unique districts, which are different bonuses for the planet below. This kilo structure has its own origin, and it completely changes the way you play the game. With it, all colonies without an Elysium will receive a negative modifier, and when you settle a planet, an orbital Elysium will instantly appear. You're also unable to decommission Elysium stations, and their capital buildings will have reduced alloy upkeep and pop requirements. You may also boost your planets with orbital arcologies which require only mega engineering to be researched. They can be built with a decision, which costs you 200 alloys per plant size. Orbital arcologies increase your district slots by 20% at the expense of 15 energy and 2 alloys upkeep. 
the orbital archaeology can be upgraded after researching these technologies so that it increases your district slots by 60%. There is also an origin, which adds an orbital archaeology to your home world. The asteroid manufactory can be unlocked right after researching mega engineering. Upon completion it produces 200 consumer goods, so it's ideal when you're struggling with them. It needs 10k alloys, 1500 unity and 125 energy credits as well as 25 alloys for upkeep. Asteroids can also be used for defense. Asteroid artilleries require battleships and star fortresses to be researched, and to build them you will need 10k alloys, 1000 unity and 3600 days. They are fully customizable, and they have 3 sections with different weapon slots. Asteroid artilleries can also be upgraded, by default you get 3 points that can be spent on different aspects of the artillery. This amount can be later increased by researching specific techs and repeatables. Also the amount of spent points is not shared between multiple artilleries, meaning that if you spend all of your points, other artilleries will not be affected. Also keep in mind each asteroid artillery needs 250 energy credits and 75 alloys for upkeep including ship components, so you'd better make sure your economy can handle them. After kilostructures, we move on to megastructures. They're more expensive and they are more costly to maintain, but at the same time they're also really useful and will greatly enhance your empire. They all either require mega engineering, the galactic wonders ascension perk, or some other ascension perk requirement alongside other techs to be unlocked. Some of the mentioned megastructures make you eligible for the galactic wonders and gigastructural constructs ascension perks, and they will be marked with the following icons. This category is also the most extensive, so buckle up as we have a lot to dive into. First we have resource megastructures, which should help you sustain your megastructures and boost your economy. The Neutronium Gigaforge is designed for harvesting alloys from pulsars or neutron stars. It requires the Galactic Wonders Ascension perk, battleships, star fortresses and neutronium armor. In total it needs 21,000 alloys, 10k unity and upon completion it produces 420 alloys and a modest 250 engineering research at the cost of 780 energy upkeep. It also increases your armor hit points by 7%. The Eggdrusil Orchid Complex uses a gas giant to produce food for your population. To unlock it you will need the Orbital Artificial Ecosystem, Mega Engineering, Terrestrial Sculpting and Battleships. It needs 70,500 alloys, 10k unity, 5k energy, 1k food, 75 influence and when fully assembled it produces 650 food as well as 300 physics and 500 society research at the cost of 150 energy, 15 unity and 40 alloys upkeep. These figures however may change as a result of different events, a new life form may evolve and consume food produced by the structure, a storm may occur on the gas giant causing the orchid to malfunction or a mutation might spread forming hallucinogens. The Star Lifter is an alternative to the Matter Decompressor, which can be built around any star. Its cost and production values scale based on star type, but on G-Class stars it needs 78,500 alloys, 30k unity and at its final stage it produces 2000 minerals at the cost of 150 energy upkeep. The Lifter requires the Galactic Wonders Ascension perk, the Macro Engineering Testing Station, the Particle Accelerator and Zero Point Power Technologies. There's also the Crystal Megabore, which also produces minerals. You can research it with Mega Engineering, Rare Crystal Mining, Advanced Mineral Purification and Mineral Isolation. It can be built around any molten world larger than size 5 and it needs 10,500 alloys, 4k unity and 7400 days to be built. At its final stage it produces 100 minerals and on top of that 50 rare crystals at the cost of 40 energy and 7.5 alloys upkeep. Some resource producing megastructures are not infinite and they stop working once a celestial body is depleted. The automated strip mine can be built on any rocky well. Its mineral production varies starting at 250 minerals at the cost of 75 energy upkeep and every 2 years it shrinks a plant size by 1. There is also a chance the strip mine finds additional resources which temporarily change the megastructure's output. Once the plant size reaches 2, the strip mine shuts down and the plant turns into a depleted well with a mineral deposit. 
To unlock the strip mine, you have to research two technologies. First, you need industrial ultra rapid replication, which requires mega engineering, modular engineering, and construction templates. Then, you will need planetary mineral extraction, which also needs mineral isolation and mineral purification. The Super Atmospheric Umbai Gaseous Collector Condenser, or SAC, harvests strategic resources from gas giants. It needs 12,500 alloys, 3k unity, 150 influence, and 7200 days to be completed. The SAC has a varying resource output, and it's capable of harvesting energy, exotic gases, and later volatile modes at the cost of 35 alloys upkeep. Similarly to the strip mine, every two years it reduces a gas giant's size by one. Once the gas giant is depleted, the sack will shut down and the gas giant will turn into a barren world of resource deposits. To unlock this mega structure you need mega engineering, quantum field manipulation and the knowledge to mine exotic gases. If you ever run out of storage, and trust me you'll need lots of resources with this mod, there's the Kugelblitz containment silo, which extends your storage by 40,000 and produces 150 energy at the cost of only 15 alloys upkeep. To unlock it you'll need mega engineering, zero point power, as well as both physics and engineering research kilo structures already researched. Next we have mega structures which allow you to do various things with stars. The substellar compressor can ignite brown dwarfs, L-class stars, or gas giants with the helioformic modifier and turn them into regular stars. To unlock it you need zero point power, mega engineering, and both physics and engineering research kilo structures. It needs 30k energy, 20k alloys, 10k unity, and 50,300 days to be completed. After that you may start the ignition process, and as a result, some planets will become lifeless habitable worlds suitable for terraforming. Later you can dismantle the compressor, or keep it for additional energy and physics research production. After the substellar compressor, you may research the fusion suppressor which also requires battleships, zero point power, the particle accelerator, as well as the galactic wonders ascension perk. The suppressor can be built around any regular star without habitable planets, for 24,000 alloys and 15,000 unity. After that there are three compression stages, which transform the system's star into a neutron star. Then you may activate the suppressor and choose one of the two outcomes. First you may cause a supernova, destroying all infrastructure including the suppressor. As a result, all planetary bodies will gain an iodesium crystal deposit. These crystals can be later used for new buildings, the iodesium power plant, the iodesium usage facility and the atmospheric fusion facility. The second outcome collapses the star into a black hole, the fusion suppressor will remain and you may keep it around for energy and physics research production and use the black hole for building megastructures. The Penrose sphere is similar to a Dyson sphere, except it has to be built around black holes. It requires mega engineering, zero point power and the stellar particle accelerator. The sphere can be used as a bomb or to generate energy. With the first outcome you need to charge up the bomb to prepare it for detonation. Once that happens, everything within the system will be destroyed. All ships and stations in the immediate neighborhood will take damage and all habitable plants will become tomb wells with negative modifiers. All colonies within two jumps also get a modifier and ships as well as stations get minor damage. High planes within 4 jumps will be regenerated and your empire will receive an opinion penalty. If you pick the second outcome, the Penrose sphere will generate 250 energy with a 20 alloys upkeep. You can increase the sphere's output if you stabilize it, raising it to 650 energy credits with a 25 alloy upkeep. Later you may also build a ring world around the sphere after researching this technology which requires ring worlds. The ring has two size 30 segments, with each one costing 40k alloys. Each segment has five district types, one for housing, industry, food, commerce, and research. There is also the Penrose Ringworld Origin, which puts your species on a ringworld around a relic Penrose sphere, which can be restored if you have the stabilization tech. Next we have habitable megastructures, starting with titanic ring wells. To unlock them you need the galactic wonders ascension perk and super scale pseudo sunlight application already researched. The frame is 30k alloys, 300 influence and 30,200 days to finish construction. You will get 4 additional segments, with each one costing 20k alloys. These segments will also be larger and they will have even more districts. Interstellar habitats are habitable structures outside of solar systems. 
to build them you have to place a construction site around a star and when it's completed an event will let you choose the habitat's placement then a new system will spawn with the habitat inside it to unlock set habitats you'll need the void bone ascension perk mega engineering and gateway construction technologies the interstellar habitat has three districts a habitation district, a research district, and an exploration bay district for minerals, alloys, and engineering research. If you have titanic ring wells and Penrose fee ring wells unlocked, you may research interstellar ring wells and build one around your habitat to further extend its living space. Similarly to the Penrose fee ring well, this megastructure also has a starting origin. The planetary computer is a perfect choice for a tech world. It has three districts, one for housing, one for research, and one for administration. The planet also has a really good modifier, which increases research output. The computer can be built on any rocky world for 27,500 alloys, 25k energy, 7,500 unity, as well as 150 influence. The megastructure is gated behind the Galactic Wonders Ascension perk, as well as several other technologies, which you will need to research first. A planetary computer can also be found in a unique system, however if you colonize it you will have to deal with a rogue AI. Also if you're a machine empire, you may start on a planetary computer with this origin. While it cannot be inhabited, the Lunar Specular Refractor is a useful megastructure for your colonies. It's a giant disco ball built around an uninhabitable moon. Once assembled, you can configure the megastructure and choose between four different modes. Lunar Light Show, Reproductive Stimulation, Subliminal Indoctrination and No Night Protocols, all of which add different modifiers to the moon's orbiting planet. Each setting also has a different chance of failure and when the megastructure malfunctions, an event will appear allowing you to fix it. The total cost of this megastructure is 15k energy, 7k alloys, 3k unity, 1500 rare crystals, and it needs 6800 days to be built. Moving on, we have military megastructures, designed to either keep your empire safe or be a threat to your enemies. The Marginal World is the ultimate megastructure designed to protect your planets. To obtain it you need to complete the Unyielding Tradition Tree. Second you need Mega Engineering as well as the Galactic Wonders Ascension Perk and Asteroid Artillery is already unlocked. If you're a Bulwark and your Overlord or a fellow Scholarium subject has the Maginot Tech, you may also research the megastructure. Before you build it, a Marginot Fort complex must be placed on a planet. In total you'll need 50k alloys, 25k minerals, 10k energy, 100 influence and 9000 days to construct the megastructure itself. The Marginot world has 4 defense related districts. The barracks district houses all of your troops. The orbital defense grid adds a defense grid operator job and a planetary artillery army which deals a lot of damage while being extremely fragile. The shield generator array also adds a job which also spawns a new army unit capable of taking in a lot of damage. Both of these districts offer upgrade points which you may use to upgrade your defensive, targeting or offensive systems. The bunker complex increases your naval capacity, spawns armies and as a fortification network army unit. Based on the district's amount, you may recruit new armies with a decision, and the more districts you have, the more armies spawn. You may also activate the subspace disruption field, which protects the marginal world from hyperweapons and blocks jump drives in subspace travel one jump away. The megastructure also comes with a separate defense platform, which can be customized in the ship designer. Aside from that, there are various technologies you can research to upgrade the Marginot world. If you have Giga Cannons, you may upgrade its offensive capabilities. And if you have plant crafts or system crafts, you can research two additional upgrades. Also, if the colony is lost, the Marginot world will explode and destroy all orbiting ships. Next we have the Equatorial Shipyard, a small shipbuilding megastructure built around molten wells without any moons. It's a relatively cheap megastructure, only requiring 20,500 alloys, 7,500 unity and 100 influence to be built. To access the shipyards you need a separate uplink module, which adds 8 shipyard slots. The shipyard has a colonizable ring, with housing, alloy processing plant, and geothermal generator districts. This megastructure also has a dedicated origin, allowing you to start on the foundry ring world. The orbital bastion is a tiny megastructure, which increases your military capabilities. It needs mega engineering and the galactic force projection ascension perk to be unlocked. The megastructure has four stages, with each one offering more naval capacity and fleet command limit than the previous one. However, there is a limit to how many of them you can have in a single empire. An empire may own up to 15 orbital 
bastions, six military administration branches, and three admiralty operations. The planetary dockyard is yet another mega structure with shipbuilding capabilities. If left as it is, the dockyard adds 40 naval capacity and expands it by 2% at the cost of 30 energy and 2 alloys upkeep. It also adds 3 shipyard slots and increases shipbuild speed through an uplink building. The dockyard has two variants. The planetary drive yard extends the dockyard's capabilities as it doubles the amount of added naval capacity at the cost of a larger resource upkeep. The uplink building will also offer you twice as many shipyards and provide other bonuses. The planetary defense nexus on the other hand has other features to offer. It has the same bonuses as the dockyard and also extends your fleet command limit. Its biggest strength however is the strike corvette mechanic. If the host plant is bombarded, or a hostile fleet enters the system, or you activate them yourself, the defense nexus will deploy corvettes based on your ship designs, without FTL capabilities. By default the mega structure can hold one corvette, but you can increase its capacity with pops. The attack moons are a result of continued study in weaponizing celestial bodies. To unlock attack moons you need the Galactic Wonders Ascension perk, as well as Colossal Movement Systems, a technology which requires mega engineering, impulse thrusters, and asteroid artillery research. To assemble an attack moon, you need to find a suitable moon first. If you're having trouble with that, simply use a new edict which shows all attack moon candidates in the expansion planner. The attack moon costs 23k alloys and 7500 unity. Keep in mind it also has a ship upkeep of 500 energy and 125 alloys plus ship components. By default the attack moon has 4 sections, but you can unlock more of them with specific technologies. Also if an attack moon is defeated in battle, you will have to repair it like a regular ruined mega structure, so make sure your enemies haven't claimed it. There are also mega structures meant for different ascensions. The big vat can be unlocked after completing the genetics tradition. This mega structure is a biological shipyard, capable of assembling creatures such as space amoebas, Yankees, swarm queens and swarmlings. Leviathans can also be assembled in the primary vat if you previously killed one. To complete the mega structure with all vats, you will need 37,500 alloys, 12,500 unity and 15,300 days. Psionic empires get two mega structures. The first one is the psionic beacon, which can be acquired if you have a chosen one leader and mega engineering. If you meet these requirements, a shout entity has a chance of contacting your empire. This entity will give you the technology for the beacon. The psionic beacon is 35k alloys, 10k unity and 7200 days to be assembled. Upon completion it produces 200 society research and one psionic supplement at the cost of 100 energy upkeep. This mega structure also has a bunch of positive modifiers boosting your ships. Aside from that, the beacon can be used for a variety of different things. You can boost your jump drives or add traits to your admirals, summon a horde of psionic avatars on enemy territory and more. The second mega structure is the psychic hyper siphon. To acquire this mega structure, you will need to research two technologies. The first one is Direct Shroud Connections, which acquires telepathy and Zero Distillation. Afterwards, you will need Mega Engineering, and with it, you may unlock the Hyper Siphon. The total cost of this mega structure is 20k energy, 17,500 alloys, 2k unity, and 500 Zero, and upon completion, it produces 500 energy. Alongside the Hyper Siphon, you will unlock Shroud Conduits which generate psionic sublimates, as well as instability from psionic pops. And the more hyper siphons you build, the more resources the building produces. As soon as you place the building, a situation will appear to monitor shroud fluctuations, and as it progresses various events may occur. Once the situation reaches its conclusion, a shroud incursion will happen, and you will have to fight off psionic entities and destroy their portal. Before we move on to gigastructures, there is a really important megastructure we haven't mentioned, and that is the Event Horizon Offset Facility. To unlock it you have to complete the Hieroglyphics Archaeological Site, which appears at the start of the game. If completed, a new system appears, with the Orange Bolt Special Project. By following the event chain and researching all the special projects, as well as the following technologies, you may unlock the first stage of the EHAV. The Event Horizon Offset Facility has to be built around a black hole, and once it's finished, a new interface will appear in the lower left corner. 
The Ehof can be used for a variety of different things. You may send ships across the galaxy to a random system, or a random system of a chosen star type, including modded stars. Another thing you may use it for is generating new solar systems. If you select cohesive stars, a ship will be teleported into a randomly generated system outside of the galaxy with no means to return home, so keep this in mind. The Ehof Lambda extends the megastructure's reach, allowing you to access an increased number of star systems, such as stellar remnants and giant stars. To unlock the next Ehof upgrade you need the following technologies. Applied Abstract Physics, which requires Applied Quantum Physics, Quantum Field Manipulation, and Abstract Physics Theory. Then you have to research the following techs, and finally to unlock the Ehof Lambda, you will also need subspace sensors. The Ehof Omega is the third iteration, allowing you to reach any star type. To unlock it you will need several technologies. The first one is Sterile Hyperneutrino Detection, which has several requirements. First you need Quadropian Formalism, then you need Unorthodox Reality Examination Techniques, which also requires the following vanilla technologies. Having researched all of the above, you will only need Dark Matter Drawing and Tachyon Sensors to unlock Sterile Hyperneutrino Detection. The second tech you'll need is hard light construct utilization, and the third one is prototype negative mass utilities, which requires unorthodox reality examination techniques, negative energy studies, and sterile hyperneutrino detection. After that, you only need mega engineering, and you may now look out for the Ehof Omega technology. The last upgrade, the Ehof Ultima, allows you to fully control what kind of star system you want, and with it you can make permanent wormhole connections until you deactivate it. It also allows you to generate a supermassive black hole or a hyperquasar, which will be useful later on with Terra structures. To unlock it you will need the previous iteration, as well as three other techs. Super causal research initiatives, which requires negative energy studies, as well as non-paradoxical information supercausality. To obtain the two remaining technologies, you have to complete the reality code event chain, which begins once you generate a second cohesive system. This event chain is a series of archaeological sites, situated on different celestial bodies. They are found in systems with a distinct cyan-colored name, and each time you enter them, a notification will appear. The sixth archaeological site concludes the event chain, revealing a system of the source of the pattern. The system is guarded by the Stellar Eradicator, and if it's defeated, you get to explore the ever-changing of an archaeological site. This site issues a special project, which adds the tech options required for Ehof Ultima. Each completed arc site will grant you a technology related to sentient metal, a unique special resource, which can be used mostly for new ship components. The third archaeological site also activates primordial pillars across the galaxy, turning them into a wormhole network connecting all Ehof systems. If you have the last sentient metal tech, mega engineering, and the galactic wonders ascension perk, you may unlock the sentient metal forge, which can only be built on the ever changing. At its final stage, this mega structure produces up to 2000 sentient metal and 1500 negative mass, at the cost of 200 energy and 100 alloys upkeep. Besides that, you can also start in a cohesive cluster with a ruined Ehof Alpha using the Away on an Island origin. Having mentioned all megastructures, we're gonna dive into gigastructures. They can be divided into lower and higher tiers. The high tier gigas are locked behind their own ascension perks, while the low tier gigas need the gigastructure constructs ascension perk, which requires titanic ring wells, dark matter drawing, self-evolving logic, mega engineering, the galactic wonders ascension perk and three other ascension perks. You also have to fully upgrade or repair a mega structure. This ascension perk is also a requirement for tetradimensional engineering, a technology needed for other giga structures. While the ascension perk itself unlocks three of them, with the first one being the Matryoshka brain. At its final stage by default, it produces 5000 research from all categories and increases your research speed by 15% at the cost of 200 alloys and 1.5 influence upkeep. To assemble the brain, you need 210k alloys, 60k unity and 300 influence if placed around a G-class star. The Matryoshka brain can be used for two things. First, you may keep it for research production, or you might use it as a virtual reality simulator. To unlock the later stages, you will need tetradimensional engineering and gigascale star computing. You can make up to four virtual reality servers, but at the same time this will decrease the research output of the brain and increase its alloy upkeep. Virtual reality servers have five districts for things like research, 
Unity, Aminities, etc. While the Virtual Consulate adds jobs which offer bonuses dependent on ethics. If you have Virtual Industries enabled, you can use a decision to replace your districts with ones dedicated to alloy slash consumer goods, energy, strategic resource, and mineral production. Also, keep in mind that you won't be able to grow pops, instead you have to resettle them. After that we have the Behemoth Ringworld, which continues the Ringworld saga. This gigastructure must be built around a titanic Ringworld, and in total you need 45k alloys and 100 influence for the frame, and 30k alloys to assemble a segment. Once again they will also be larger, offering you 30 districts compared to titanic Ringworlds. There is also an origin, which allows you to start on a ruined Behemoth Ringworld that can be later repaired. This is not the end however, and you may unlock gargantuan ring wells. They are locked behind two technologies. The first one requires behemoth ring wells, while the second one needs tetra-dimensional engineering and the previous technology. To build the frame you will need 60k alloys, 300 influence, and 26,400 days, while each segment needs 40k alloys and 14,400 days to be constructed. Gargantuan ring wells are the final iteration of ring wells, and they offer up to 40 districts, and 60 housing units. The last gigastructure unlocked by the Ascension perk is the HRAEMC, that can be built around a black hole to harvest energy and dark matter, as well as produce physics research. Aside from that, it also lowers your pop consumer goods upkeep. The total cost of this gigastructure is 67k alloys, 50k unity, and 300 influence. Now, let's move on to the Nicole Dyson Beam, one of the deadliest hyperweapons you could ever build. It can only be built once around A or B class stars. To fully complete this gigastructure, not only you will need resources, but also different technologies to unlock all stages. The first technology requires tetra-dimensional engineering. The following tests have to be researched one after another, and the last technology requires tachyon lances and stellar particle accelerators unlocked. To fully assemble the nickel Dyson beam, you will need 119,500 alloys, 50k unity, and 500 influence. Upon completion, you may select a possible target. First, you have to choose a hostile, neutral, or friendly system, then pick a country you want to target, and then pick a star type, and a system which matches the star you've chosen. Later, you can pick between targeting a single planet or an entire system. If you target a planet, you can specify which one you want to destroy and pick one of the four modes. If you target a star, the entire system is obliterated and all hyperlanes connected to it will disappear. When the target is destroyed, depending on what kind of settings you've chosen, the gigastructure will take time to recharge so you could use it again. Certain systems, such as galactic core systems, other NDBs, systems with archaic shield projectors, and systems with Maginot wells cannot be targeted, so keep this in mind. Behemoth planet crafts are mobile plants filled to the brim with powerful weaponry. To unlock this gigastructure, you need tetra-dimensional engineering and attack moves already researched. Behemoth planet crafts can be assembled from any uninhabitable rocky planets, larger than size 24. Once again, if you're having trouble finding these, you can use a new edict to see all candidates in the expansion planner. The total cost of this megastructure is 220k alloys, 40k unity, and 150 influence. By default, the Behemoth Plant Crafts comes with 5 sections, with even more weapon slots, and it also has 2 very powerful exclusive weapons. While the Behemoth Plant Craft is a lot stronger than the Attack Moon, it's also a lot slower, and it takes up 250 naval capacity. Similarly to Attack Moons, if lost in battle you have to restore them like a regular megastructure. To afford and sustain those powerful gigastructures, you will need a ton of alloys, and that's where the Nidavellir Hyperforge comes in. The Hyperforge harvests pulsars or neutron stars, producing 1500 alloys at the cost of 3500 minerals and one influence upkeep. It also adds a ton of useful modifiers, which increase alloy production, army, and ship weapon damage, as well as armor hit points. The Hyperforge can also be stacked with the Neutronium Gigaforge, so you can build them in one place. And the last low tier gigastructure is the Hyperstructure Assembly Yard, a giant shipyard built around A or B class stars. Upon completion, it grants 90 shipyard slots and other bonuses through an uplink building. On its own, it also produces 1500 minerals at the cost of 3k energy, 1k engineering research, and 1.5 influence upkeep. Besides that, it also adds 1500 naval capacity, 
extends resource storage and increases your ship build speed. Finally, let's move on to high tier giga structures, starting with the Aldersen disc, which can be unlocked with the slice of life ascension perk. This giga structure is an enormous ring, with enough space to build 8 hyper segments to house your population. Once you complete the frame, you may start building hyper segments, but before that, you have to specialize them. There are 3 segment types you can choose. Gaia Alderson slices have districts for agriculture, energy slash mineral production, industry, and trade value slash amenities. Alderson computing complexes are similar to planetary computers. They have districts for unity and research production. They also get the same research boosting modifier. Ecumenopolis Aldersons are giant ring cities with districts for consumer goods, alloys, strategic resources, unity and amenities. They can be unlocked with the Archaeology Project Ascension perk, and if you're a machine or a hive mind, these hyper segments are replaced with more fitting variants. Also, if you ever wish to switch segments, you can do that with terraforming. This giga structure also has an origin, and with it you start on a shattered hyper segment with blockers that need to be removed. All other segments are ruined, with the exception of two other segments containing powerful primitive civilizations. Next we have the Lunar Macrofabricator, which acquires the Celestial Warship Assembly Ascension perk. To place this giga structure, you will need 65k alloys, 30k unity, 100 influence, as well as 1250 volatile modes, exotic gases, and rare crystals. To create Atakmus with it, you will need to research the second technology from the Ascension perk, which lets you harvest planetary mass. This resource can be extracted using decisions on any rocky planet. After that, a planetary matter harvester will appear, mining one planetary mass per six months until the planet reaches size zero. To fabricate attack moons, you will need 30k alloys, 20k energy, 10k unity, and seven planetary masses. While this method is more expensive, fabricated attack moons will receive additional buffs, making them more useful in battle. After that, you can research behemoth assembly plants, capable of printing out entire plant crafts. The total cost of the assembly plant is 300k alloys, 40k unity, 300 influence, as well as 8k volatile modes, rare crystals, and exotic gases. Plant craft fabrication also requires more resources, and for that you need 200k energy and alloys, 10k unity, and 26 planetary masses. The last giga structure is the ultimate celestial warship, unless you're using other mods. It's the Stellar System Craft, an entire solar system turned into a ship. Each stage of this giga structure requires a technology to be unlocked, and the assembly process itself is a lot more complicated, and it requires a ton of resources, as well as additional attack moons and plant crafts. To complete a system craft, you will need the following 510k alloys, 120k unity, 300 influence, 5 attack moons, 4 plant crafts, as well as a crew of 40 pops, which can be acquired with a decision. Upon completion, the system will be replaced by empty space, and the system craft will become operational. The system craft has very powerful sections available for use, with two exclusive T weapons at your disposal, and you can also use it as a plant cracker. It also has has unique A slot modules for resource production or adding bonuses to the ship. Keep in mind this ship takes 500 naval capacity and has a 1500 alloy upkeep, so make sure to fully prepare your economy. Also, if the system craft is somehow defeated, it's going to split into individual plant crafts and attack moons. And finally, we've made it to Terra Structures. There's only two of them, and they are locked behind different ascension perks. These wonders of engineering are the most powerful megas out there, and they can only be built around a supermassive black hole or a hyperquasar only found in the galactic core. How do you get there, you might ask? During mid-game, an event will give you a special project to locate galactic core hyperlanes. After that, you may explore the region and try to claim the center. Up first we have the Birch World, which can be unlocked with the Vast Expanses Ascension perk, which acquires Master Builders, Gigastructural Constructs, Gargantuan Ring Worlds, as well as Tetra Dimensional Engineering and a supermassive black hole discovered in the galactic core or generated with the EHOF. This Terra structure is the ultimate habitable world, which without a doubt might provide enough housing for the entire galaxy. The amount of required resources for its construction is absolutely insane. In total you will need 1,450,000 alloys, 80k unity, 
300 influence, as well as 15k volatile modes, exotic gases, and rare crystals. The Birch World has 4 districts, structure operations, and 3 insulas. Structure operations regulates how many insulas you can build, and this amount changes every 100 pops. Insulas are kind of like continents, with different districts inside of them. If you build one of these, new districts will appear, and their capacity is determined by the insula. The Auritka Insula specializes in producing otherwise inaccessible resources, and it unlocks districts for energy, mineral, negative mass, and dark matter production. The Kutisma Insula offers various industry-related districts for alloy, consumer goods, strategic resources, and sentient metal. The Fisma Insula revolves around studies and entertainment. It unlocks districts for food production, research, unity, and trade value slash amenities. The Birch World also has its own origin, and with it you start on a decaying Birch World in a state of disrepair. Your goal is to explore the Birch World and find a way to restore its systems, and as you make progress through the situation, you will continue to learn more about the Birch World and its history. The second Terra structure is the Quasi-Stellar Obliterator, which has to be built around a Hyperquasar. To unlock it, you will need this Ascension perk, which requires new structural constructs, Behemoth planet crafts, Nickel Dyson beams, Tetra-Dimensional engineering, and a Hyperquasar discovered or generated by the EHOF. Similarly to the Stellar System craft, all of its stages are locked behind technologies that you will need to research one after another. The total cost of this Terra structure is 1,725,000 alloys, 100k unity, 25k strategic resources, and 300 influence. Upon completion, you may use the control panel to fire the weapon. First, you have to choose from a variety of different targets, and compared to the Nickel Dyson Beam, you can destroy several stars at once. Then, you will have to build a marker around an object you wish to destroy. In case of single fleets, you need to send a special ship to the target system. Later, use the control panel once again, and fire the obliterator. Each shot also costs quasaric energy, by default it's produced by the Terra structure, but you can change the production parameters in the menu, you can decrease or increase the charging rate at the cost of energy upkeep or throw away some resources to gain quasaric energy. Also, there is another risk involved with this Terra structure. As you assemble the obliterator, your relations with the galaxy will get worse, and as a response to this hyperweapon, a pan-galactic federation may form, and it might declare a total war to defeat you once and for all. Certain megastructures such as flat worlds, frame worlds, and square worlds can only be found naturally or unlocked with origins. The framework is a mega structure perfect for a one planet challenge, and while its building slots are limited, the number of districts can be expanded. To do that, you can fabricate station modules, use the logistic optimization program decision, or harvest asteroids. By default, the framework has 5 standard districts, but more of them can be unlocked by researching regular technologies. Some mega structures also unlock new decisions, which unlock even better districts, allowing you to enhance the framework even further. You cannot colonize planets, instead you can build planetary outposts on habitable planets to gather resources or add useful bonuses. Keep in mind they also contribute to your empire size like regular colonies. All pops from conquered planets will be automatically resettled onto the frame world, and after that a planetary outpost will appear over the colony. The frame world is guarded by defense stations, which get stronger as you unlock starbase upgrades. Certain megastructures are unavailable with this origin, and certain ascension perks and technologies provide other bonuses instead. Megastructures like the Dyson Sphere, the Star Lifter, and the Matryoshka Brain have different costs, outputs, upkeeps and build times based on star classes. G-class stars have no multipliers, while M-class stars have all values reduced by a half. O-class stars added by this mod have the highest multipliers, with a 450% increase in cost, 500% increase in output and upkeep, as well as a 350% increase in build time. They are extremely rare, and if you encounter one, you will also need special technologies to build the said megastructures. You can also change the megastructure build cap and set it to job based. 
This option enables Super 10 Siles, a resource which determines how fast you build mega structures. Super 10 Siles can be acquired from buildings, rare resource deposits, districts on mega structures like the Equatorial Shipyard, the Frame World, etc. Their monthly gain gets converted into mega structure build speed, so the more Super 10 Siles you produce, the faster you can build. This number also changes depending on how many mega structures you're building simultaneously. For more details, you can check the Mega Construction Speed modifier. Besides all of this, Gigastructure Engineering has various other features. Throughout the galaxy you will find wrecked ships, ranging from vanilla ships to attack moons, as well as unique systems with different megastructures and other events. Fallen Empires can now have various megastructures. This includes asteroid artilleries, as well as attack moons, with their number depending on the chosen setting. If this feature is enabled, one of the two unique Fallen Empires may spawn, which have a Matryoshka braid inside their borders. Different achievements can also be unlocked for completing different challenges, and some even give additional bonuses. All features mentioned in this video can be configured at the beginning of the game, so if you don't want certain things, simply disable them. Now that you know everything about Gigastructures, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the second part, where you will find out how to survive these goddamn cats, what's lurking in the galactic core, and is the Ehof truly safe?